the first 300 years of the church, the church looked like the book of Acts. It was people that loved Jesus, obeyed Jesus, were willing to wait on Jesus, and were filled with his spirit, and everywhere they went, they did the same things Jesus did. Why? Because the same spirit that was in Jesus was in them. And so it looked like a whole lot of little Jesus is walking around all of the Middle East, spreading out all over the world. Until around the 300 AD mark, when the Roman Empire actually became Christian, and it's interesting because most people think, well, Constantine made Christianity the, the national religion. What he saw was Christianity was growing in so much influence and power. And like all politicians, they don't dictate the wave of culture. They follow the wave of culture. He saw that if I want to maintain power, I need to connect to these Christians because they're powerful. And he made Christian the national religion of the Roman Empire. Which sounds like a, a great thing. But anytime you institutionalize something, you lose the power that's behind it. And what had a whole lot of power now had a whole lot of pomp, circumstance, and tradition. What was it found in the underground, in the houses of people, in synagogues on Sundays, since they didn't use the synagogue, the Christians would meet on Sundays in the synagogue. What used to look like happened in town squares as Paul would go preach in the middle of Athens to all these false gods and Peter would be in the streets. What was this organic power movement became this deeply rich traditional Christian movement. They started building cathedrals with beautiful stained glass and steeples. They started having professional Christians who knew the word or trained in the word and taught the word. And they had all the institutional things, but they lacked the power of them. And so there's people that are always a remnant that always maintained this obedience to the Holy Spirit, this infilling of the Holy Spirit that protected and shared this power that God had given them throughout century after century after century. Around 1890, 1900, all of a sudden, God begins to pour out His Spirit again in a fresh way that became mainstream. See it with Azusa Street of Revival. We see it with Charles Barham and and, and all these great revivalists from back then. And and what happened was these these Baptist believers were doing nothing more than studying God's Word and praying. And when they would come across a scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, wait until you receive the Holy Spirit, so then you repow- receive power. They would say, we're going to read and pray and wait until we receive power. And what is crazy is, when they actually read God's word, had faith in God's word, waited on God's word, they received the promise of God's word. And they started receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit, started prophesying speaking in tongues, and the gifts became to the forefront of the church again. And that movement became the Pentecostal movement, which again was this underground movement because the mainstream church wouldn't want them to be a part of their movement because they weren't traditional enough for the movement. Holy Spirit, these these mainstream Christians that were filled with the Holy Spirit, they thought they were given a gift of tongues as a missionary language. And so they actually started moving away from California and the Midwest, even the Deep South, moving to Africa and Asia because they thought they were given this missionary language to evangelize the world with, only to get there and find out that it wasn't a, a natural human language, it was a language of angels or spiritual language. And you see this growth throughout the whole 1900s to the day where the fastest growing, really the only growing movement in the world is the spirit filled movement. Why? Because we live in a day and age where tradition's not going to get you what you need. Religion's not going to satisfy your soul. And the world is going against you in every single form and fashion. And so the only way you can maintain that is if there's a strength and a power in you that's greater than that that's in the world. And we call that the infilling of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 19.